I have a penchant for thinking far too deeply about the most trivial things, worrying if I'm making the most of my time. I'm young, but I'm tired too. Maybe I shouldn't procrastinate so much, leaving things for the last possible moment, but some things, try as you might, can't be helped. Every day that passes is another missed opportunity, and as much as I regret letting the seconds, minutes, and hours pass me by, I don't. Not completely. Time isn't truly universal. It's much more subjective than it seems, and as scary as that is, a small part of me finds that minuscule space for individuality comforting. Reality is a matter of individual perception. I'm aware that I'm living on borrowed time, that my existence is finite and even meaningless in the grand scheme of the cosmos, but I still sleep past noon. I still nap when I can, choosing to escape the weight of my impervious responsibilities far more than I should. And I'll be the first to admit, but there's something about time and change in life that makes me want to avoid the unavoidable. I'm afraid to live my own life. Like it's not alcohol, it's not <laughs> <laughs> Tell me you love me. Time for me is fleeting. Of course it moves forward, but it seems to change its tempo. It's not as simple as a cliche expression where time flies when you're having fun, but rather it tends to rip and tear at it seems the longer you watch the long hand itch at its face. There are moments it evades common sense and strangles a memory before it can commence, but the thinnest hand is equally an anarchist in recompense. As if the faster it counts the seconds, the sooner it takes its rest. Little does it know this act is a scam at best. The shortest hand relays the hour, a tortoise traveling at a tortuous pace crawling around Roman scabs scattered along the outer rim of a familiar face, a pathetic attempt at marking its place in a realm devoid of cognizance. The sands of time, elusive and more rough-tempered hands attempt to grasp it. Grains, seconds, tiny particulates slip from the crevices of imperfect human palms. Where do the lost seconds go? Are they buried in the disarray of an immovable past, or are they relics recoverable by omnipotent quantum physicists who dip their toes in philosophical qualms with the hopes of diffusing something restless within them. They mask their stress, they mask their distress with passive indifference, a tick tick ticking time bomb. They seek the truth, but remain terrified of it. Terrified of it. Terrified of it. Terrified of it. Who would dare pity the wandering vessels haunted by the mundane made enchanting? Who would dare pity the wandering vessels haunted by time?